So I want to start uh, with the big, um, I guess the biggest picture of all is, is what are the plans. Uh, the plans are today to derive the Maxwell equations and the stuff on this t-shirt. Uh, tomorrow we're going to do quaternion quantum mechanics demystified. So a bunch of those issues that you feel like, why does this work? Well, I think, I feel like I've stepped, taken a step closer to appreciating it. It doesn't make it easy. <laughs> it's still started hard as hell. But, um, but I think we might make a step forward, which is cool. And then uh, Saturday is going to be about quaternion animations. It's, it's my belief that someday, um, in this, this book uh, by Jackson, where was Jackson? Davis Jackson. Um, every equation in this might just have an animation. That's a dream. That's a big dream. It's, it's easy to define, right? Okay, so I go to this place and I click on it and I get, it, I get a picture. But it's my belief that someday uh, that might happen, which would be amazing. Uh, because otherwise these are rather hard to read. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me give you a big why for me uh, uh, of this project. And um, that is that I, I am not a, um, a standard physicist. I, I don't work as a, 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 a physicist. I am a lunchbox f physicist. And by lunchbox, I mean this is literally my lunchbox. I use it every single day. So, <laughs> so this is something that I do for fun in my slivers of free time, because I have a full-time job, a full-time wife, a full-time two-year-old, and it's only from 10, a, uh, 10 p.m. To, to 1 or 2 that I actually get to work on this. And the reason is on the box, okay? And so let me read this to you. Uh, this is from John Archibald Wheeler, who wrote this nice thick book along with uh, Thorne Wheeler. Oh, yeah, no, no, uh, Misner. He said, how can physics live up to its true greatness except by a new revolution in outlook, which dwarfs all past revolutions? And when it comes, won't we say to each other, quote, oh, how beautiful and simple it all is. How could we have missed it? for so long. What's so cool and powerful about that is this guy wrote a phone book of a book that if you ever you know, get to read it, it's like, not simple, okay? It is not simple. So what is my proposal? Well, Newton said that time is absolute and space is absolute. He wasn't actually happy with that as an answer. But his mathematics compelled him to say that, and so he went with his math. In 1905, Einstein figured out how, for people who were moving at a nice constant velocity, time and space could rotate into one another. And that was special relativity. And then working with the smartest math guys around, because he wasn't so good at math and <laughs> he could use them out, he figured out in 1915 how to generalize this. You could be on some kind of crazy surfboard and you could still agree to what was going on. But the math was so hard then that they could only solve a few very simple situations. We go 80, 90 years later, the math is still hard. <laughs> you make global news if you find a new answer, okay? And it's just not very easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put time next to space. I am never going to let them separate. It's kind of like putting them together, and, uh, putting them in bed together, and saying you have to stay in bed together. There is no operation that I will allow that allows you to think of time separate from space. This is kind of an odd fetish, uh, but you'll see that I, I use it consistently throughout. Okay, so that is my goal: to put time right next to space, never break that rule, and see all the consequences that happen. And I think some of them are very cool. All right, so the, the focus of today's talk is trying to find a meaning in this very t-shirt, which you are going to do the work, you're going to uh, earn this t-shirt, okay? <laughs> you're going to have to go through all this now. Um, and visually, um, what we're doing here is saying that the, the, the map that's on the back, which is really rather scary, somehow implies all the big claims on the front. Okay. So let's go over the big claims on the front. Um, the standard physicist said uh, a math equation, and there was light, gravity, radiation, and a nucleus, but no stinking pigs. Uh, visualphysics.org. 
And on the back, there are very few words. Uh, there's this one symbol that maybe some of you aren't familiar with. It's uh, called the Lagrangian. So one Lagrangian to rule them all, J.R.R. Albert Tolkien. No, there was no J.R. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, something about hypercomplex and quaternion products. All right, so now we're going to parse what it said on the phone. And we're going to look at the standard physicist, this light gravity radiation and nucleus, the no stinking Higgs comment, and visualphysics.org. So who is a standard physicist? Uh, what has he done? Uh, he's got a secret identity. We may never know who he is. <laughs> um, but he's got a, over 100 uh, YouTube videos up there. Medium to really long talks. And the reason I claim to be the stand-up physicist, oh, I just let it slip, um, was, <laughs> was uh, that I do a, a short skit at the end as a reward for, for going through that much uh, hardcore math. Uh, and, and all you have to do is leave, leave a lot of downloads up for years, and you can end up with 150,000 downloads. Uh, but I like to think of it as global outreach to non-professional folks. All right. So uh, then it it's talks about uh, these light gravity, uh, gravity radiation and uh, the nucleus. Those are the four known fundamental forces of nature. Uh, light and gravity, I think, are pretty familiar to everybody who's sitting down in this room. Uh, the weak force gets less press. Uh, it has to do with a particular form of uh, radiation decay, beta decay. Uh, it only works over a limited range. The strong force is something that keeps a nucleus together. So that's very, very uh, important. Uh, it has a, it uses what, gluons, and those travel the speed of light, but because of confinement they go, but I don't want to <laughs> leave the room uh, of the nucleus. Uh, that's a, something called uh, confinement. All right. Um, now it says uh, no stinking Higgs. Um, this is a, a variation on a, a, a quote, no stinking badges, uh, which was made famous in a, a Bogart movie. Let's see if we get our, our amp working here. Um, So that's, that's where that phrase uh, comes from. Uh, so the Higgs particle, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a $10 billion search going on uh, for the Higgs boson at the Large Hadron Collider. This is a little bit misleading in the sense that they've been looking for the Higgs boson for like 20 years. Okay? So they're just putting another $10, uh, $10 billion into the till. Um, and it's that thing that's called the God particle. A little story behind that. The, per the physicist who proposed that actually wanted to call the book the God Damn Particle. <laughs> because he was frustrated at not finding. This was like 10 years ago, okay? And on top of that, uh, and so his editor said, yeah, but it will sell a lot more books if, it's, if we just shortened it to the God Particle. So that was not an act of arrogance, which is, I think is important. It was an act, actually, of frustration, uh, modified to sell a lot of books. <laughs> okay, so um, what, what the Higgs does is it's one, one essential way of giving mass to particles. And it has to do a, a, a trick. It's got to be able to break symmetry without breaking symmetry. There, there are symmetries in there that, if they're broken, then you'd say, this isn't conserved anymore. If you break U1 symmetry, the symmetry underlying electricity, then you'd say electric charge isn't conserved anymore. And there are some, some people, experimentalists, who say, well, we know it's conserved out to you know, 40 decimal places. 
So you better not break it. That would be very bad. And the Higgs mechanism somehow has that ability to do that. And what this t-shirt actually argues, actually at this, at this point, uh, well actually I'll get there, uh, is that, that um, the Higgs mechanism isn't needed. All right. That's right. I, I should turn off my, my battery powered amp. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, now, now there's uh, my website, visualphysics.org. You may have clicked on it or, or not. Uh, let me just see if we can uh, bring that up. Um, and so uh, manifestos, in other words, what, what are my outlook, what are my attitudes towards uh, physics and whatnot. Some tutorials, animations, downloads. Um, and in particular, I think preprints is important uh, because... Um, what it does is, is this, I am not, I'm a lunchbox physicist, so I can't publish to the pre physics preprint server. I, I use this tool, and what's different about this tool is that, um, yes, not only are there web pages and PDFs, but there's a Mathematica notebook. And what's cool about this is every paper I've gotten from the real official preprint server, it's like, how can I do work with this? And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> They're hard to understand. Um, with, with this, you get a Mathematica notebook, and you could actually do variations with it. I mean, actually do calculations. So that's something different. Then the talks page I just put up, forums. The, I say I'm, I'm, my goal is to build a community, but I want, don't, I don't want to claim that I have a community, because you'll notice that Doug, 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 and Doug, okay? Uh, and that's, that's the status of, um, of, of that website at this time. Okay, so if I could find, there we go. Um, all right. So uh, there, there's a lot more math on the, on the back than words, as I've, I've said before. Um, so what is a Lagrange density? You know, it's one of those things that I remember when somebody said, you've got to figure out the Lagrange density, I got scared, because it sounds fancy. It sounds, sounds really hard. And, and the, the first thing they said, oh, this isn't so bad, was the units. It's mass per unit volume, okay? And what it turns out to be is all the ways that energy can exchange with each other inside of a, a lunchbox, okay? And that's it. And we're going to figure out what to do with that sort of thing, but that's all it is. And it's the properties of the Lagrangian that are on this t-shirt that support every single claim. So um, now we move on to quaternion products. Uh, and I think everyone already knows how to use quaternions. They just use it under a different name. And that's fine. It's uh, one of the more productive tools out there. Um, Hypercomplex numbers are <laughs> even less popular than quaternions. Um, I think there's one guy on Comcast who uses them, but anyway. Uh, but it's basically like a, a quaternion product, uh, but there's no minus signs needed. And um, I think that's the tool that's going to be used uh, for gravity. So we'll see how well I can support that. So now we're going to just at least get a, a scan of the math to get a, to get, a, get a sense of what's going on here. So um, <laughs> I think this is a great cosmic joke in some ways, that the, my unified standard model proposal uh, is known as Laplace's equation which means it was probably known by Laplace <laughs> quite a few numbers uh, uh, years ago. Um, okay, there's also that other equation. Uh, the first one is Laplace. But um, the other funny thing that happened in version three of the t-shirt, this is why it's good to come up with knickknacks, um, was that it was like, well, I know that this phi thing is dimensionless. And if I want to make that del squared thing dimensionless, well, it has units of one over length squared, so I need to multiply it by an area. And uh, that's the Planck area, and that's got units of, that's a gravity, quantum mechanics, or relativity, relativist quantum mechanics. <laughs> like, oh, I was just trying to make it dimensionless. I wasn't trying to do relativistic quantum mechanics. I was just trying to make a t-shirt. Um, so, so that's kind of crazy. And, and, the, and, and the other, again, I think is funny, is that this whole thing equals zero. When I did this calculation, okay, I got the zero, and I got really worried. <laughs> I thought, oh no, I really messed up here. Uh, I spent a couple days going, does this make any sense at all? I kind of don't think so. And then I thought, 
Hold on a second. With electricity, I learned a long time ago that light charges hate each other. And I learned with gravity that they always love each other. So if I really put them together, are they going to love or hate each other? It can't be both. The only rational answer is zero. It was like, whoa, that was, that was a very happy uh, result. At least it felt to me. So uh, the, the link between them uh, that I'll keep up here is uh, as far as light is concerned, it has to do with these things. This is normalizing a, a complex value. So this is a, a unit circle kind of thing. Uh, gravity is all about these hyper complex uh, products going on here. Uh, the radiation has to do with the symmetry known as SE2 and the unit quaternions, and that's the way they do it in uh, those heavy books. And uh, the nucleus, uh, I'm arguing that, that if you multiply two of these together and they're this vital star here, then it might be a way to represent that group and have that symmetry. If all these symmetries are in the Lagrangian, if each one of these A's has that, then there should be conserved charges for uh, for electricity, three for the weak force, and eight for, for the strong force. Um, and then the no-staking Higgs has to do with the plus and the minus here. That's it. All right, so um, that is a overview of, uh, of the t-shirt. So now we go on to the quiz, because, uh, you know, these sound really, really hard. I mean, are you going to be able to handle this kind of thing? And, um, and I think you all are, okay? Well, maybe that youngster. How is, where is that you super youngster? All right. Um, so, do you know how to factor b squared minus c e squared? Yeah, shout it out. Shout it out. All right, yeah, yeah, excellent. <laughs> All right, now, can anyone calculate the following? Zero? Yeah, oh, yes, all right. It, it's not zero. Zero would be the wrong answer. You do get a b squared and a minus b squared and e squared minus e squared, but you get cross terms. And the cross terms actually add up. Okay, they, there are four of them. Oh, I divided by four, so it's just BE. All right? Um, how about multiplying complex numbers? Oh, I don't even bother. Come on. That's <laughs> that couldn't be easier. Right? All right. So, uh, ooh, but what if, I cheated, what if I cheated the world and made I squared equal to plus one? I bet this looks really similar to the last answer, huh? Yes, there's just one sign change in there. Okay, um, now, what I, I, I'm using uh, two scalars, uh, t, t and t prime, and two three vectors, r and r prime. And so I say, okay, what, what are all the basic combinations that I can get of that? Scalar, 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 vector, uh, dot product, cross product. It's like, yeah, that was easy, I hope. <laughs> so there they all are. Um, We've got to do some calculus. I remember when I first approached calculus, you know, it had the lead time of, of, of everybody saying, calculus is the hardest thing you will ever do. If you can do calculus, you are smart, you know? And then you learn these two, you know? And it was like, are you kidding me? That's easy. <laughs> uh, these two are, at least, you know, like y and, and 2x. And it turns out that this is all I'm going to use in the Euler-Lagrange equation to derive the Maxwell equations. <laughs> going back now it's going to look a lot more ca complicated there's going to be a lot of detail okay but um, that's a, just wanted to give you a heads up all right so uh, and then we need to find the minimum value of something so this is one of those things where you uh, take the derivative and um, and set it equals zero and go oh it's just zero okay and now we have to know a little bit of, uh, of physics uh, electric field in the e direction is just this uh, minus these two things negative. So that's pretty, it's the time derivative of A minus the, you know, um, derivative of the scalar field in the x direction. Uh, the B field, this again is, all you have to, well, this, this one always takes me a little bit of time. Which one is negative, you know? Uh, I suppose you all have your own tricks. The other thing is there should be no thing in there that has an x in it. So it's got the AY, it's got the AZ, it's got DZ, it's got a D, uh, DY. And, um, and that's the quiz. 
So I hope you didn't find that very difficult. Um, and so here we go. Uh, this is what I uh, attached to the email. Um, so just a review of it. Um, what we're going to do is merge complex numbers with scalars and vectors to create uh, quaternions. So this is the links between complex numbers, scalars, and vectors. And in this case, uh, that R that's in yellow, that's really a single number. Whereas the R with the arrow is a triplet of numbers. And you'll notice that, hey, there's a TP prime, there's a, basically a, 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 a dot product. There is a uh, scalars um, kind of being expanded by um, vectors, that sort of thing. Um, but there is no uh, cross product in, in the, in the uh, complex number. Okay, so basically, quaternions formalize uh, that link between these two, and um, they, they provide a minus on that dot product. And that's about it. So um, hopefully, that, that doesn't seem that unfamiliar. Um, but if we, uh, oh, we, if we had an I squared uh, equal to plus one, um, then it's like that one, except there's there are no minus signs to remember. As it, uh, and I call this thing, I have to generate my own symbol. This is not like universally accepted over the globe. In fact, I don't know anybody else who does it. Um, but I'm calling that the symmetric curve. So you don't have to remember the sign. I love that. <laughs> it's nice when the math makes it nicer, to, uh, easier to do. All right, so that was that was it for uh, for merging uh, complex numbers with vectors and making um, making quaternions. Now we're going to do what I call uh, third grade math, um, but it's it's but it's 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 really uh, an introduction to graph theory. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. Oh. All right. Oh, it went back. Kind of that mode. All right. Um, so in third grade, we learned how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And we also learned, maybe you, you did the speed tests with that. I remember doing, like, trying to do 100 problems in three minutes. Um, and we actually loved clay and pipe cleaners. Um, so I'm going to combine the two. <laughs> and this is... Um, that clay ball there is a vertex in graph theory speak. The pipe planer is an edge. And we knew back in third grade that one times one equals one. This is a, an undirectional graph if you want to get fancy. Um, but I think you could have taught third graders about complex numbers with these pipe planers. OK, so we still have one times one equals one. And one times i equals i. Okay. Uh, one, one, I times 1 equals I. The only tricky thing is that I times minus I brings you back to 1. And so you have to go back on an edge that's different from the edge that brought you out. Okay? And so that is graph theory. Um, and hypercomplex numbers are easier to make out of clay and pipe cleaners. <laughs> you just drop an edge. Because it, it doesn't matter whether you go there or back, uh, one times i is i, and i times one, uh, no, and i times i is, is one. That's how you get that. So it, it, that vertex is, is labeled with an i. So that's easy. Um, and this is what a quaternion looks like. Um, it's got the, uh, an i, a j, and a k. It's got three complex numbers. The complex numbers always emanate out from that, uh, that black ball, that's the real number over there. Um, the reason cross products are confusing is the colored plane, okay? That's where you have to remember which way you're going in order to get the sign correct or not, okay? Um, and the reason I like hyper-complex numbers is they're like quaternions, only quite a bit simpler. I mean, it's actually easier to build this, <laughs> okay? Uh, I have this in my basement. Uh, no sign of sign, signs to remember, just simple type of things all right. Now, um, okay. So uh, the summary is that uh, the, the quaternions and hypercomplex products really, to me, look like uh, we're, we're covering all kinds of ways to combine collections of four numbers together. Uh, 
And the reason that this is actually so important to me that I brought it up to you folks is because as you go, if you go, if you go into uh, theoretical physics, you'll, you'll find people like one type of number, or they believe they can do all kinds of things in another kind of way. And, you know, you're not going to change their opinion, you know, really. Uh, they've got a commitment to that kind of way. And there are not that many people with a commitment to quaternions and even fewer who care about hyper-complex numbers. So I have to say, why am I grounded in, in the possibilities? And it really gets down to this graph theory, feeling like that's got to be such a systematic, thorough way of exploring what four numbers can do with each other. It's got the look. It doesn't have the formal, I can I explain it to a math head, you know, why this, this is better than some other thing. Uh, but it appeals to the third day. All the girls in the classroom think he's hot. He shows up wearing the sandals with the white socks. He hears him giggling while he's got his back to the class. He thinks he's got an eraser mark on his ass. And all the girls from the hall show up to hear him talk. Even though most of the time he's covered in chalk. Math Grady.